August 27th, 2012, you're listening to the Jack Blood Show. Happy Monday. I trust you had a good weekend. Mine really lasted about 12 minutes. But it was fun. Well, Greg Knight is with us. And he's got a good story. He works with the Sentinel in Alaska. And they were the first people to know the true identity of the guy that wrote the book, No Easy Day. A first-hand account of the mission that killed Osama bin Laden on September 11th, under the pseudonym of Mark Owen. And the, uh, Greg was nice enough to send this information to us. We had it even before Fox News broadcast it. And it began, I began to see this whole story begin to unfold. This book coming out just in time for the debates, for the campaign, because what's going to happen is Mittens is told to attack Cousin Barry on foreign policy, and Cousin Barry will hold up the torch and say, I killed bin Laden. And here's the book to prove it. And yes, okay, I didn't do it all by myself. That's what the, some kind of crazy thing the media says. Uh, these guys are heroic, and what a great, how great our armed services is. And look at a great job we're doing with the drones. And look what we're doing in Syria. And we threw out uh, the, the dictator we put in, in Libya. <laughs> I mean, good luck, Mitt, on that foreign policy argument. That's not going to go well. So let me bring up Greg Knight here, and we'll talk a little bit about this, how he got the story, what's really behind this Bin Laden book, and then I'll uh, I'll add into it. Greg Knight, good having you. Thank you for being with us today. Where do you want to start here? We all know that the uh, U.S. Navy SEAL, a secret guy with the pseudonym Mark Owen, came out, and he's got a book just in time for the election. First-hand account on the mission that killed Osama Bin Laden. The problem is... They threw bin Laden's body into the Arabian Sea. They uh, burned down and completely erased this uh, this residence where they found him in Pakistan. So there's no forensic evidence. There's no evidence. And a number of the SEALs, at least we think that, that were directly involved in this alleged kill, went down in a chopper crash here last year. Uh, what, 39 of them. Over 30 of them died in one place. So this is the one account we're getting and this is going to roll into Steven Spielberg movies and all the rest so start off with how you got the story and and start setting the the plate for us here well it started out about 3 weeks ago um i work at a local newspaper up here in alaska and i get a lot of people that come in and offer me stories and uh this one very nice lady who offers me lots of stories all the time came in and had mentioned to me that uh the father of a navy seal who had killed bin Laden was in town and he was our former judge. And I essentially told her, unless he comes in here with uh, DNA evidence and a non-forged photo, I really didn't care. It wasn't an important story that I could cover locally. Uh, so I really disregarded the story completely. Um, about a week later, I picked up on a Fox News story um, regarding, uh, before he was named, when he was first named Mark Owen, um, before he was outed as Mr. Bissonette, uh, saying that there was this Navy SEAL who was involved in this raid. He was writing the book, and he was from Alaska. Uh, it doesn't take too much to put two and two together to think that there might not have been maybe more than one person on the ground in, in, in Afghanistan or Pakistan who was from Alaska on this raid. So I put two and two together, and on that day, um, actually the first day that you and I talked, um, put it two and two together and realized that Matt Bissnett was actually Mark Owen. And at that point, I started making lots and lots of phone calls. Yeah, and a lot of people were calling you. In fact, uh, some alphabet <laughs> agencies and a lot of big newspapers and whatnot, when they realized that you knew the identity of this guy when no one else seemed to. Well, actually, that's the eeriest aspect of the whole story. Um, the day that Fox outed Bissonette uh, as the Navy SEAL, um, I, got, I had been leaving phone calls all over Washington, D.C. with all the alphabet agencies pretty much. Uh, looking for information. Um, one of the agencies I didn't call was NSA, but I managed to get a phone call that day from NSA from a, a Mr. McCallum, because I keep notes on everybody I call and everybody that calls me, yeah. and uh, got a phone call from NSA wanting to know, uh, wanting to return my call on a question. I'm like, I didn't call the NSA, but here's what I know. What do you guys know? And they really didn't know much. It was interesting. Carney, um, <laughs> Press Secretary Jay Carney, also wrote you in response to some of your inquisitions. And what did he say? Um, that's correct. I got I, I had a number of sources um, that I contacted throughout the, the week that I was investigating the story. I mean, among the CIA, uh, the White House, Jay Carney's office actually directly emailed me back 
with the statements. And uh, I could read that to you from the story if you'd like. Yeah, please. Uh, in uh, in the story, what I did is I had called, I had uh, emailed rather the white. First, I called the White House, and they said submit it as an email um, question. So, quote: We were unaware of the book until Wednesday, which was last week, and the press reports about it. So I don't know what's in it. That was a direct quote from Carney during his press briefing at the White House mm -hmm. uh, last week. So the White House is disavowing everything. The CIA. Um, in, an, in an email with me um, and also a phone conversation uh, basically told me they weren't going to go on the record about anything to do with his identity and then immediately went on the record with me and told me uh, we don't know anything about what's in this book we have no idea, never heard of it Okay, now here's the funny thing. The Navy has declined to offer comment uh, as uh, Carney is kind of giving you a comment, no comment as is everyone else and Correct. Fox News is reporting this as well. They did not vet it. This is what came out when we didn't know who the guy was. Uh-oh, this guy's gone rogue. He's written a story about the bin Laden kill, <coughs> the alleged bin Laden kill, that um, wasn't vetted. And he, what are we going to do? Oh, my God. Uh, the fact of the matter is they have every ability to stop this book from coming out. There is at least uh, some agreement with uh, uh, people, especially in special ops, they can't go out and write anything. CIA, you can't write anything unless we approve it. That's the uh, deal they have. That's correct. Every uh, every member of Special Operations, and I know this for a fact because I was in the Army at one time, and I was in a spec ops group back in the early 90s. And so, you know, it's a fact. When you leave the military, you sign a statement saying that you will not discuss without prior authority or prior approval anything that you were involved with or knew about, especially if it's compartmentalized or top secret stuff. So uh, Bissonette did that. Um, obviously when he retired or didn't retire but left the SEALs in April of this year. One of the things I do want to point out though, Jack, is Fox News and how badly they butchered this story, especially yeah. in terms of this town. Um, Wrangell, Alaska, I work for the Wrangell Sentinel newspaper. We're a town of about 2,000 people on an island in southeast Alaska. We're closer to Canada than we are to the igloos, but uh, we're definitely a small town in the middle of nowhere. And uh, Fox News reported on that first day that Bisnet was from Wrangell, um, when in fact that's not the case. Uh, his dad was a judge here um, nearly a decade ago, and Bisnet did visit our area maybe once or twice, from what I've heard, but he never was from Wrangell. And uh, you know, while I'm not really a believer in Al Qaeda coming after small town America. Um, it definitely puts us on the map for false flags. Well, that's and right, and, they, sure. and this yeah. this has come now. The intelligence we don't know we don't know what Al Qaeda, and we call them Al Qaeda, Greg, as you might have heard if you've listened to this show enough. We don't know what they're saying, so how do we know? Well, the CIA tells us what they're saying, and the CIA told us that now they have put a kill order out on Matt Bissonette now that he's been identified by people like you, Greg, in Wrangell, Alaska. That has made you guys a target, so it isn't just a, a minor faux pas. It just isn't just a minor mess up of the actual details that this news organization that has thousands of employees and, and billions of dollars got wrong. It's the fact that they could put you guys in danger. Uh, that's correct, and you know <clears throat> the funny thing is, is that the way I the way that this went down was really kind of crappy on Fox's part because the day that it came out about Mark Owen and the day that I put it together about Mr. Bissonette, I called Justin Fischel, who was the uh, reporter for Fox that outed him in the first place, and I asked him point blank, "Is Mark Owen Matt Bissonette?" And he wouldn't go into too many details. Said he had a baby on the way, and he couldn't talk. Next thing you know, the very next day, Wrangell, Alaska is plastered all over foxnews.com as the city that he's from. So um, I really take deference with the way that Fox News reported it, especially since it's our town, and we're a very close-knit town, and we're a very loving town, and we don't like being in the spotlight unless we deserve it. Well, now you are, so that, you're going to live with that. And, you know, here I am outside the perimeter in Atlanta, Georgia, so, you know, I, I, I feel your pain, I guess, somewhat. Okay, let's get to this. Does anybody know what's in the book? No easy day, the first-hand account of the mission that killed, uh, <coughs> allegedly, Osama bin Laden, otherwise known as Tim Osman, on the anniversary of September 11th, Matt Bissonnette. What, what previews do we have? What do we know? Because you've got some inside information on that. Uh, we Well, we know absolutely nothing except for the fact that Christine Ball, 
the uh, spokesperson from Dutton Books, who's the imprint of Penguin that's going to publish it, has promised to send me one after September 11th. The only thing, the only bit that's been released off of the book was a quote um, by Bissonette under the name of Mark Owen, where he said that, uh, quote, it's time to set the record straight about one of the most important missions in U.S. military history. That is all we have in terms of a quote. On the back channel, however, after talking with my source CIA and also talking with Penguin Books, or rather Dutton, um, the book seems to, at least from what they're saying, is going to have a very strong anti-Obama bent to it, rather accusing the president of trying to take more credit than he deserved yeah. for this act. So that that's that's the back channel information I've gotten. But there has been nothing released by the book. In fact, Penguin and Dutton have really kept the book under a real tight veil of secrecy since they uh, announced And they've printed hundreds of thousands of copies to roll out. And as you told me in a pre-interview last night, we're here with Greg Knight uh, for the Wrangell Sentinel in Alaska, uh, who really was the first one to break this story of who this guy is, uh, Mark Owen, a.k.a. Chief Petty Officer Mark Bissonette. Um, well, what you told me last night was, um, yes, that this was anti-Obama. I'm going to take that in a second. And did I lose my train of thought re-announcing you? Potentially. Uh, where were we on this? That uh, it'll come back to me. So let's go. Let's just pass that up so we can keep moving forward. Because I want to tell my listeners what I think. There were... Well, one of, the, one of the funny things that's going on, Jack, is he's bringing. I mean, he's going now to Spielberg. You mentioned that too. He's also in the works to create a video game. That's it uh, for his uh, for this Navy that's SEAL it. operation. Thank you. So there's a lot of cashing in going on here um, in terms of the story. The, this and this again is a story that's not approved by the government and by the intelligence agencies and by the military, which they could stop at any time. Uh, and that's exactly because it's national security, folks. I mean, you, there's this stuff you can't print. I would love to see all the truth. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any truth in this. I think this whole thing is a massive setup. And I think that it would be, it would have to be cleverly disguised to be somewhat anti-Obama, or they would know it's coming right from Obama. Now, they, this, we have to set a little history here, Greg, with our audience, and that is about two, three weeks ago, there was a big flop, a big mess, charges by the Republican Party that that Obama had leaked details about the SEALs operation to allegedly kill bin Laden in uh, in uh, last year, 2011, because um, he wanted to use it for his campaign, and that uh, he had might have breached national security, that uh, they should not have leaked this, and uh, we know they're very clever in leaking things, using things like, by the way, I think WikiLeaks, uh, they're very clever in how they pass it along down the food chain so that somebody else can be blamed and they can have plausible deniability. So there really wasn't any charges that could stick on the Obama campaign leaking information about the SEALs operation to kill bin Laden to take credit for it. So now, conveniently enough, just before, just at right in time to be uh, put out just where the debates are going to be happening and in the final stage, this is a September surprise. In the final stage, it's going to be critical of Obama taking credit for an operation that they say actually happened that there's no evidence of. None. So, I mean, we're still left with this. Now, we've got to read the book. And what are we going to, what are we going to find? What kind of evidence are we going to find in this book? We're not going to find any. It's going to be one guy's account of what allegedly might have happened that where he is not supposed to be telling people this. Um, the whole thing just sounds completely sneaky and shady, like a massive setup. Again, because I don't think a lot of people believe this, the official story about Bin Laden. Everyday people, not conspiracy theorists. Where's the body? This is weird. You got rid of the body. You got rid of all the evidence, and we just got to trust you and take your word for it. So all this seems very nicely timed, Greg. Well, it'll be interesting when the book does come out, and like I said, Penguin promised me an advanced copy, or at least a first edition when it comes out. It's going to be interesting to see um, the progression of the story. Um, from what I understand from talking to folks here in Wrangell, because you got to understand, in Wrangell, this was kind of an open secret um, about Mr. Bissonette. I mean, it was known, at least by talking to folks here a year ago, that he was... <clears throat> Excuse me. In in Pakistan that day, the, the, he landed in that chopper. The the one that was actually left behind or blown up that was in the compound before they tore it down. He was allegedly on that craft. And so for the last year, it's been an open secret here in town 
that he was on that. Everybody knew it, just nobody was really talking okay. about it. So it'll be interesting to see the narrative after the book comes out of, you know, where did uh, where did his involvement begin and where did it end? Was he on board the aircraft carrier when the body was dumped? That, that'll be an interesting aspect to see when the book does come out. Well, I want to remind my listeners of two things. One, they showed us a, a picture of Obama watching the kill live with his, uh, his trusted officials and then Hillary Clinton with her in a gasp with her hand over her mouth. And we were told that that was them coordinating the attack. They were on it and they were giving directions and they were watching this whole thing live. Then it came out in the back page of a newspaper somewhere and they're still trying to sell this lie, that that wasn't actually, that didn't happen. And then uh, uh, Clinton says she only had allergies. That's why her hand was over her mouth. So they basically just admitted that picture was totally staged and fake. We had all these people come out with handmade signs ready seconds after this kill. Uh, you know, college kids, kids, people out in the streets who look like paid uh, protesters who were out and, and uh, climbing the trees. We got Osama bin Laden, Obama, yeah, you killed bin Laden. Okay, he's gotten all that credit. The second it happened, that is almost impossible. Uh, I'm sorry. And then we have other versions of the, the story that, um, uh, uh, that um, bin Laden allegedly was <clears throat> using one of his wives as a shield and was shooting at these guys, and they had to kill him. That's why they didn't take him alive, et cetera, et cetera. We found out that wasn't true. And then, of course, this whole book that they say that that uh, Bissonette could get in hot water if he discloses sensitive information. Why are they waiting for this book to be published? They have the power to go get the book, the manuscript, read it now, and stop it if there's sensitive information. The whole thing stinks. It's a lie. And the funniest part, I mean, and it's, it's almost insult to injury as far as I'm concerned, um, because I was in San Francisco on September 11th. I was in the town. They shut down San Francisco because one of the planes, the, I believe it was the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania, was headed for San Francisco. So I, I have a very deep connection to 9-11. And they're releasing this book on 9-11. So the majority of the, of the public, and probably you, Jack, will have to wait until then. I'm going to get my copy here sometime soon. I'll make sure and share it with you when I get it. Okay. What we do know, and it does seem to confirmable, that Bissonette was uh, past the buds, was a SEAL, was in the training program in 99, was stationed uh, at, with SEAL units, uh, did win, I guess, the Bronze Star, the Purple Heart, joint uh, that, service. Yeah, that's right. I actually uh, got a copy of his military record from an admiral in the SEALs down in San Diego, and it was able to confirm actually the dates, that the actual dates that he went into the SEAL training when he graduated, when he was stationed east and west coast, all of that, plus all of the medals that he won. And, yes, he did win uh, the Bronze Star as well as the Purple Heart and a number of other uh, service-related ribbons and medals. And his dad was a judge. His father was a judge um, both in Antioch, Alaska, and in Wrangell, Alaska. where uh, What kind of judge to... was he? Do we know? Was he a, a rubber stamp judge that uh, held the the company line or was he kind of a rogue judge that wanted justice and tried to help the people or what kind of what do we know about that he was a local magistrate and here in alaska local magistrates deal with things like traffic citations misdemeanors oh. um anything that's not a felony so he was basically <clears throat> excuse me your city court judge he was just handling average stuff mundane cases you know you speeding uh drunk in public that's the way it works here in alaska the magistrate is a is a non elected position or it's an elected position and you you just basically handle small stuff and he did that in a small village up in Alaska called Antioch which is where Bisnet graduated high school from he did not graduate from Alaska okay but Wrangell Alaska by the time that Bisnet graduated he and his father moved here, he was already in college or graduated and into SEAL training. What I'm trying to figure out Greg Knight is I want to know who this guy, why him? Why, did, why is this guy writing the book? I need to know that because I believe he's writing it for Obama and for the Obama campaign and, and more importantly for the people that control Obama, which we already know is Kissinger, Brzezinski, uh, Soros, and Buffett and the usual suspect. Why? And these are the guys in Wall Street who is st still funding Obama. I'm sorry. I know he's, he's Mr. Anti-1%, but uh, follow the money, folks. Why him? Why Matt Bassinet, in your opinion, Greg? Um, well, I've talked to – here's the funny thing. From everybody I've talked to here in Wrangell who knew him and knew his family, this is the nicest kid you ever could have met from what they said. This was a uh, – he was a high school basketball star and just the nicest kid ever. 
So for me to venture into you know, his, psych- his psyche without knowing him, I couldn't tell you. What I can tell you is that he retired as an E-7. Um, that's a squad leader in special ops. That's the first guy who's going to go through any door on any operation. Um, I can tell you that from experience. So if there was anybody who was, you know, even if it was, even if the operation wasn't real, um, and it was faked, um, for their benefit, they did might not have known what they were going into. Maybe it was real. Who knows? This guy was in a position to be first person in the door. Um, well, that would mean he was vetted. That means he's been initiated pretty hard to um, to get as far as he has in his career. The reason we have to ask this question, who is this guy, why him, is because I still believe this story's fake. And so, therefore, he is writing a piece of fiction and campaign propaganda. So we'd have to know more about him to see if he could be used somehow. Now, keeping in mind, hey, you can take a guy like this, and he might be gung-ho, patriotic all the way. I'm not, I'm not saying you know, SEALs aren't patriotic. He's not patriotic. And uh, there could be something where, hey, look, um, you know, we're going to need you to write this book for us, and this is how we want. But this didn't happen, sir. Uh, no, you're going to write that book, or we're going to have to kill your whole family. I mean, we just don't know. We, we don't know, and he's got a ghostwriter, right? We don't, what, what do we know about this guy? Because uh, we don't know if he, they, he just wrote the whole book, and this guy had to put his name on it. Um, the, the co-author is a guy named Kevin Moorer, um, who is a very, very, very well-known war correspondent and war reporter. has been in Afghanistan a number of times, embedded as a reporter with the U.S. Army Special Forces. So we're talking about a guy who has been um, in the war fields and has written books about it, a number of books, actually, and is quite well-known in the, in the industry, the book industry, as a, a war writer. Yeah. yeah. In other words, a pro- paid propagandist. Okay. I mean, he's nodding because I can see his video here, but he can't say it. Uh, uh, but that nod could have been anything. You could have been trying to get a fly off your nose. So we will just give you plausible deniability. Uh, I don't want to, I'd like to know what Jesse Ventura has to say about this for one. I don't, I haven't heard him say anything yet. Maybe you have and I haven't. Uh, we've got one minute left. So, uh, whatever you want to add that we didn't get to today. Uh, Greg Knight, thank you very much for joining us from the Wrangle Sentinel. Yeah, no problem. I just really, like I said, want to go back to the beginning and clarify that this guy's not from Wrangell. Um, Fox got it wrong, as usual, and uh, they uh, misreported where he's from. And I really wanted people to know that he, he was stationed in Virginia Beach as his last duty station. And uh, he's from Alaska, but not from Wrangell. We, uh, we're proud of folks that come to Wrangell and live here. Um, I'm not from here. Glad to be here, though. But, uh, you know, it's, it kind of puts a black mark on our town. So that was the reason why I really took the story on and took it to heart was to clarify the record that Fox screwed up yeah. on. Well, thanks for being a reporter and not a repeater, and you make the Wrangle Sentinel sound like a paper worth reading, and I know you said your editor is familiar with me, and yes, I know, people don't agree with me all the time. We, we That's what we invite, actually, and you've been listening uh, f- to our show for a while, so it's great to see that there are real reporters out there still, Greg, and, and you want to keep us uh, posted, please, if there are any new developments here. Absolutely, will do. All right, thanks so much for joining us, folks. we got to cut out, and we do have James Corbett joining us live right here on the Jack Blood Show next in just a few minutes, August 27, 2012.